All right, here is my unofficial solution video to the fifth and final free response question recently released by Bedford Freeman Worth for practice for this year's AP exam. I'm going to assume that you've seen my previous videos. If you haven't, I'd recommend that you'd watch them before you watch this one, because I'm going to skip right into getting this problem done here. So when I first saw this picture, the thought that came to my mind with, was that this is essentially what can be called a conical pendulum. So think of it as an object here. Usually a pendulum just swings back and forth along essentially a, a two-dimensional plane, but this object is moving in the third dimension. It's actually moving away from us, if you will. So this sweeps out the shape of a cone, if you consider the rope and all. In any case, I just thought I'd mention it because that's what you may hear it referred to as in the future. In this question, we're described the following. Two students are playing a game called tetherball, where a ball is connected by a rope to the top of a vertical pole so that it can move around the pole as shown in the figure. So yes, that's essentially what we've just seen and I've described as a conical pendulum. Now part A specifies as the ball passes directly in front of the pole such that it's moving to the right. So it's moving to the right. So like right here, if you can imagine that, where its velocity at that very instant would be directed to our right, viewing it from this point of view that we're looking at this picture. It collides head on with a small ball thrown at it softly by a third student. And we are asked to, in a clear, coherent, paragraph length response, describe the motion of the ball attached to the rope. I'm going to refer to that as the tether ball after the collision compared to the motion before the collision. All right, now, being a free response question, you are well advised to describe as many details as you can here, bearing in mind that you must keep it relevant to the question and, of course, correct physics. So there's very little said here in Part A. It doesn't look like a very big question, but again, being a paragraph-length answer, I'm going to try to bring in yeah, not everything I can think of, but as many relevant details as I can. I'll show you my answer in a moment, but let's just kind of introduce Part B here, and then I'm going to roll into my full solution, which I've written up ahead of time. So Part B just kind of continues this. It says, at another time, so imagine this is like a separate trial or something like that, at another time, as the ball passes directly in front of the pole, so the same starting conditions, such that it's moving to the right, it collides head-on with and sticks to a small lump of clay. So that's different straight off the bat because previously we weren't described, uh, it wasn't described to us exactly the nature of the collision. This one, it actually specifies that it sticks, so that immediately has important connotations for the physics. But more importantly, something really different happens. Uh, just reading ahead here, it says, the rope breaks at the same instant of the collision. So we are asked again to describe the motion of the ball clay system this time after the collision compared to before the collision and to justify our answer. So we're describing the motion in two separate cases. Part A, the rope remains attached. Part B, the rope breaks. So I've already written up an answer. It's a fairly detailed answer. I've actually kind of looked at this uh, scoring guide, so I'm pretty sure that it does have all the points in it, but we'll go through it quickly and I'll show you the scoring guide and where I would earn each point in my solution. So here it is. Uh, in part A, I say, prior to the collision, so just to give a little bit of a, an introduction here, prior to the collision, the tether ball had two forces exerted on it, the downward force of gravity and the tension force from the rope, which had two components, an upward component which balanced the force of gravity so that the ball did not accelerate or move vertically. So horizontally, it's just maintaining a fixed level. It's not moving up, it's not moving down. And a horizontal component, which would be directed towards the pole, which really is to say towards the center of that circular motion. In fact, that's what was causing it to accelerate towards the center of the circle, or centripetally. Now, Again, we weren't given a lot of details about that first collision, so I'm going to read into it that since the ball was described as being small, which is to say a low mass, and that it was thrown softly, I'm assuming that means that it was rather slowly, I'm going to assume that the collision with the small ball would reduce the tether ball's speed. And just to be clear here, had that been a heavier ball or a really fast moving ball, it potentially it could have stopped the horizontal motion of that tether ball, it could have even reversed the direction of the tether ball, but I wasn't reading that into this question. I was reading into the question and kind of making that, I think, safe assumption that it was only meant to slow the ball down. 
So since the collision would exert a force on it in the direction opposite of the tetherball's velocity. So it's going to slow it down, but again, I'm assuming not going so far as to stop or reverse its motion. In fact, I say that its velocity immediately after the collision would still be to the right. Now, with the speed of the tetherball being smaller than before, but the tension being initially unchanged because the tension is not going to be affected by that collision immediately. It won't be affected until the ball starts to move in some different way. So the ball will still be vertically supported by the rope, and the horizontal component of tension would continue to cause the ball to accelerate towards the pole. But, this is kind of the important part in my opinion, but this horizontal component force would be larger than needed to continue moving in the circular motion for the new reduced speed and unchanged radius. So if you think about the equation for centripetal acceleration, even though I didn't write it down here, a centripetal is v squared over r. So we have a smaller v, we have the same r, so a to accelerate centripetally in uniform circular motion would be a smaller acceleration. So the ball has a larger acceleration than it, quote, should to maintain circular motion. So the ball would therefore start to gain a component of velocity directed towards the pole. In other words, it is not going to maintain movement along a circular path. And so it would swing around the pole, but along a path that initially takes it closer to the pole, i.e. the angle theta, which was in the diagram, if I just remind you of that. Uh, there was an angle theta between the rope and the pole, described right there. So that angle theta is going to get smaller as it moves inwards somewhat. That's really all I had to say about part A. Again, I could have gotten into details about what's going on specifically with the momentum or what's going on specifically with energy and kinetic energy and work. Uh, you could throw a lot, a lot of things into it, but since we are told to describe the motion, I chose to stay, for the most part, focused on just the motion, you know, the forces and accelerations and the like. Okay, part B was the collision with the clay and then the rope breaks, if you recall. So here's my response to that. The tetherball speed would again reduce because of the collision, but to be clear, this collision was described in a very precise way. It was told that they stick together. So that tells me that the clay, uh, the collision rather, is inelastic, meaning that at least some kinetic energy of the two ball system, so notice that I've defined my system in here, was transformed into other forms of energy, such as internal energy. And with the rope no longer providing a tension force, the system of the two balls would have only one external force, and that is the force of gravity exerted by Earth. And yes, that would be an external force since I've made my system composed of just the two balls that are now stuck together. So the two balls would fall together, in projectile motion. I was tempted to maybe just leave it as that, but again, why take any chances? If you're writing up a paragraph length response, you might as well give details. So I clarified what I meant by projectile motion to say, i.e., they would continue to move with a constant horizontal component of velocity that is still to the right, since that's the way they were moving, while accelerating in free fall vertically downwards. They will move along a parabolic path, until hitting the ground somewhere to the right where the collision took place. So when you're writing your response, you don't know exactly where the points are. And I wrote this up actually before I looked at the points. I then looked at the points and just made sure I clarified a couple of small details, but mostly it was there already. You don't know where the points are, so don't take any chances. Try to include as many relevant and correct details as you can in the time that you have available. All right, so here's the scoring guide for part A. Notice that it's worth six points. There was a lot to be said in part A. So let's go through this point by point and see where exactly I would earn my points. We're told that the first point is for an indication that a head-on collision changes speed, but not direction. In my answer, I said fairly early on that because of that collision, uh, I said it right here, this is kind of where I'm getting into it, it's th thrown softly, the re okay, it would reduce the tetherball's speed since the collision would exert a force directly opposite, but the collision would, uh, the velocity rather, would still be to the right. So I think that would qualify for that point. The motion is still in the same direction as before, to the right, at a lesser speed. So I didn't explicitly say it in that way that, hey, this collision is going to change the speed but not the direction, but that information is there pretty clearly, so I'm happy with that. 
Okay, this second point for stating that when the ball slows down, the centripetal force needed to keep it moving in a circle decreases. So again, that's that equation in effect, uh, a centripetal equal to v squared over r, and of course, if you multiply both sides by m, you would get the net force, the centripetal force. So m v squared over r, if you will. So with a reduction in speed, the acceleration would be smaller. So if that force is still the same as before, it is not going to work out. It's not going to maintain a constant circular motion, a uniform circular motion. And I do say that in here somewhere where I say that this horizontal component of force would be larger than needed to continue moving in a circular motion for the new reduced speed and unchanged radius. Okay, so that should about do it right there. The, uh, the fact is that uniform circular motion will not continue. Okay, the next point right here for indicating that the tension in the rope supplies the centripetal force. So I think that kind of preceded in my answer uh, what I just pointed out to you, but it's in here. The horizontal, maybe right about here, the horizontal component of the tension force would continue to cause the tether ball to accelerate towards the pole, and I think that's the second time I mentioned this fact, but either way, it's in there. So that point would be earned. And moving on to the fourth point, I guess. Fourth point. For indicating that the horizontal component of the tension provides the centripetal force. So that's kind of redundant. I'm not sure that was on purpose or not, but we've already kind of indicated that. And the vertical component balances the force due to gravity. So the vertical component of tension is why it's not falling in effect. So I've got that in here. Uh, the ball did not, okay, force of gravity. Oh, right here. The force of tension had an upward component which balanced the force of gravity. So that point is earned. And moving on to the next point. Need a highlighter here. So one point for stating that the angle that the rope makes with the pole changes, correctly supported by some physics reasoning, even if a previous mistake was made. So the angle changes. Now, I'll have to be honest, when I first wrote up my answer, I didn't explicitly say that. I had a lot of information that kind of, I would argue, implied that the angle changed. But I didn't actually say that in my original answer. I did kind of slip that in after the fact. If anything, that might be the one point I wouldn't have earned in my original answer. So I'll just go back here. It is in there now because I, I had the advantage of correcting for that. So I did slip that in here. In fact, I think it's, it's literally this IE part. This is what I added, IE the angle theta between the pole would initially decrease. So I did have that in there just for just to really make sure I nailed that point, you know, for this demonstration here, you know, this, this, this is supposed to be a good, a good answer. But before I saw that that was a point, I really only had that sentence that preceded it. So I think that this implies it. The ball would therefore start to gain a component of velocity directed towards the pole, and so it would swing around the pole, but along a path that takes it closer to the pole. So I'm not sure if that quite would have been enough. Uh, it's debatable, I think. But suffice it to say that with my little addition there, it's now explicitly clear. All right, and then the last point is for part A is that floater point that we've seen so many times. It just says that everything is logical, relevant, etc. And I think that it is. So I'm just going to press on to the next part, part B. So we have three additional points here. So this question was worth a total of nine points. So this next point here. For correctly reasoning, this is in part B, don't forget that that's when the string broke. Correctly reasoning that this is a totally inelastic collision, and so kinetic energy and therefore speed decreases. So for sure it does. I talked about that here. So tetherball speed would again reduce, so the speed would reduce, but the collision with the, the clay ball is inelastic, meaning that at least some kinetic energy of the two-ball system was transformed into other forms of energy. So sure, we got it. Moving on, second to last point for correctly reasoning that with no tension, because the string has broken, the ball will no longer move in a circle, its new horizontal velocity remains constant. So setting up that projectile motion, and that is definitely in here. So it would only have one external force, the force of gravity, projectile motion, so that's kind of already starting to imply it, but then I explicitly said it, moving with a constant horizontal component of velocity. That would take care of that point right there. And the last point right here, for using Newton's second law, 
or reasoning in terms of changes in gravitational potential energy to describe the subsequent motion in the vertical. Okay, so describing the motion in the vertical using Newton's second law. Now, that doesn't mean you have to write the equation. It just means that you have to use that concept that a net force will cause an acceleration. So that is in here where I've got the vertical movement being described. So I've already said that there would be only one external force now, and that is the force of gravity. So as a result, it will accelerate in free fall vertically downwards. So that should take care of that point. So this should be a completely correct solution here, answer, response to that paragraph length response. And that will do it for today. There's, uh, I did say that this is the last question. It was question number five of a five part series. But after I wrote up my solution to question number one, there was a revision made to the question, so there's an updated version number one. I'll see if I can get around to making an updated question number one video to accompany it. But that's it for now.